Last week, I talked about generational curses and how to turn them into blessings. If you missed it, please go back and listen to episode 77. Today, I want to talk about Yom Kippur, also known as the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippur concludes the 10 days of repentance that begin with Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the new year, also called the Day of Judgment or the Day of Remembrance. Yom Kippur is the holiest day of the Jewish year that is observed for a 24-hour period beginning at sundown by refraining from work plus five additional prohibitions. Number one, eating or drinking. Number two, bathing. Number three, anointing the body with oil. Number four, wearing leather shoes. And number five, sexual relations. I read that leading up to and on that day, Jewish people traditionally ask for forgiveness for wrongdoings from God and from fellow human beings. The goal on Yom Kippur, as I understand it, is to, in a sense, transcend and discipline the physical body so that we can focus more intently on the state of the soul. What I want to talk about particularly today is the three main elements of Yom Kippur, how they relate to atonement, and what we can learn from them. They are fasting, prayer, and reflection, which ultimately result in reconciliation or atonement. That's all fine and good, but what does atonement mean? In its most simplistic form, it is to do something right to make up for doing something wrong. A good biblical example of atonement is Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. By doing so, he made atonement for our sins, which ultimately result in the penalty of death. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. So Jesus stood in our place so we wouldn't have to pay that price for our sins. The Bible says, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And because Jesus was a pure, sinless, and therefore perfect sacrifice, the story of his death doesn't end with him dying. He rose with power over death and over sin on the third day and has imparted that same power to those who believe him and follow him. Okay, now for the first element of Yom Kippur that leads to atonement, and that is fasting. The goal or purpose of fasting is to give up something that is self-gratifying and maybe even harmful or detrimental to your life to gain control over it rather than letting it control you. Fasting is a form of self-denial and self-control. It is taming your fleshly, outwardly physical body so you can connect spiritually and be more in tune with God. Fasting helps us to block out all of the distractions and noise of the world so we can hear God's voice clearly to make sure we are where we should be spiritually and to know what his will is for our life. It leads to atonement because it helps you to identify and take control over those things that are hindering your relationship with God. It helps you to get in right standing with him. You can't address or solve a problem you don't acknowledge or even know exists. Even in our relationship with one another, in order to make a wrong right, you have to give up your need to control and be right. You have to apologize or make amends with someone you have wronged or offended. Denying yourself, such as giving up the need to be right or having the last say for the sake of peace with your brother or sister to reach reconciliation can be a form of fasting. There are some victories uh, that can only be won and some obstacles that can only be overcome by denying yourself for a period of time. There's a scripture that says, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So my fasting question for you today is, what have you given up lately that you love or that God is not pleased with? What have you given up lately that you love or that God is not pleased with? Okay, the second element, prayer. 
If you've listened to any of my recent episodes, you know why prayer is important. Prayer is a two-way street that allows you to speak to God and hear back from Him. Speaking to Him is great, but hearing from Him is greater because He will direct you to stay on the path of righteousness and salvation. God will lead you to repentance if that is what is required. Even with other people, if we pray before opening our mouths or acting, we will always do the right thing when it comes to reconciling with one another. So my prayer question for you is, do you use any of your prayer time to hear from God or to atone for sins? Okay, and the final element, reflection. One of the definitions of reflection is serious thought or consideration. The other is an impression, such as the image you see when you look into a mirror. It's important to reflect on the condition of your heart and soul, not just your physical body, because your soul can affect your physical body if it is not tended to. The Bible talks about sin in our lives being the reason that many are physically sick and that some have died. It says, for this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. You know, unrepentant sin or living a life of sin is a hard life, according to the Bible, which says that good understanding gives favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Every prudent man deals with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. A wicked messenger falls into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is held. So reflection is important because it allows us to identify the sin and problem areas in our lives. But we can't stop there. We must retain what we see. We must act on what we see. You know, the Bible talks about a man looking into a mirror and immediately forgetting the image once he leaves that mirror. It says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. For he beholds himself and then goes away and, and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. The forgotten image of a man in the mirror is likened to someone who listens to the word, the message of Jesus, but does not do what it says. Reconciliation with God and each other cannot happen if we don't do what the word of God says. Live holy, love, forgive, pray, fast and so many other instructions that tell us how to live a God-honoring life. One such example is a scripture that tells us to leave your offering there at the altar and then go make peace with your brother and come back and present your offering. So my reflection question is, have you allowed God to identify the sin in your life? And what are you doing about it if so? Here's what I want to say about today's episode in a nutshell. If you practice the three elements of Yom Kippur on a regular basis and make them a part of your lifestyle, you will not only understand Yom Kippur and the Jewish faith a little better, but you'll enhance and deepen your spiritual life and your walk with God. The last thing I want to share with you is a scripture that I believe captures the heart and the essence of what Yom Kippur is all about. And that is, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Bye for now.